Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. I am Theodore Henry. This week's program kicks off with health as Get the Facts tackles vector control measures. Later, things heat up in the kitchen with Omari O'Brien as he whips up his fantastic chicken pasta stir-fry dish. You don't want to miss out, so stay tuned as the magazine unfolds. Let's get a little breeze on this land. All right. Now let's get some bounce in the rhythm. All right. <laughs> let's get some fire on our hearts. No, that is what we call all right. Run, come, get some. Jamaica. The Ministry of Health and Wellness launched its Enhanced Vector Control Program in August. The program accelerates the fight against mosquito-borne illnesses. Shereen Huntley-Jones joins us next to tell us more about the program. Welcome to Get the Facts, the program that provides you with information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm your host, Anthros Campbell. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has increased activities under its vector control program in a bid to reduce the mosquito population and breeding sites. An island-wide campaign is ongoing, and Shereen Huntley-Jones, program manager for the vector control program, is our guest today. Mrs. Huntley-Jones, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. Good. Please tell us what are the activities under the Vector Control Program and what are the coordinated initiatives that are used to deal with these activities? All right. Every year during the months of June to September, the Ministry enhances its Vector Control Program. And what this means, in addition to our ongoing routine activities, we employ over 1,000 temporary workers to augment the activities on the ground. The ministry enhances its program at, during this time of the year because for Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean, if you're going to have an outbreak of one of our ABA viruses, be it dengue or Zika virus or chikungunya, it tends to occur, occur during the months of October to January of the following year. And so we enhance our program three months prior to in an effort to reduce the possibility of that outbreak. So during the months of June to August, September, we take on a thousand workers who are trained and deployed right across the island in all our 13 parishes in what we call our high-risk areas to carry out various activities. So the activities would, would include? So they are, they are tasked with three main acti yes. um, um, responsibilities. Yes. One, they are to build awareness at the community level. In fact, the persons are selected from, the, from their own community, so they're familiar with the, pers the householders. So they are to build awareness. Secondly, they're asked to look for and destroy breeding mm -hmm. sites. And for those breeding sites that they find that they cannot destroy, then they are also trained to treat those breeding sites. Yes. Well, tell us about the, the importance of the program and like some of the risks that, that would be posed to persons who are exposed to mosquito bites and so on. So as, as we know, there are three endemic mosquito-borne diseases now in Jamaica. And they're no that, endemic. Yes, means that we have them all the time. Mm -hmm. So since 2014, we have had chikungunya, which is now endemic. Since 2016, Zika has been endemic. And of course, we have always had dengue. So we have three vector-borne diseases, yes. mosquito-borne diseases that are endemic. Yes. And they're all ABA viruses. Right. Mm -hmm. And talk to us about the training for the persons who are employed on the, under this program. So the employment of the 1,000 persons have become a part of our overall vector control program. And so we wanted to have a cohort of person that we can select from every year that is very knowledgeable about the program. So in 2016, when our Honorable Minister, Dr. Tufton, came on, he asked that not only should we employ the persons, but to have them trained. And so we have been collaborating with Heart NTA in the training and certification of these programs. And that an entire program was de developed for this category of workers. And so approximately 800 have been trained so far and certified. And we will continue to do this because, as you know, persons leave the program, they become employed otherwise, or they go to school. So as we get new persons in, we continue through the collaboration with Heart NTA to train them. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, these vector control aids, as you call them, right. talk to us about which communities they're, they're going to and, and, and so on. Okay, so we have deployed them to what we call our high-risk communities. So based on our historical data in terms of Aedes aegypti infestation, based on our historical data relating to transmission of 
cases based on what we call some environmental parameters, we have um, determined high risk communities, areas in which we're likely to have transmission. Yes. And so the workers have been deployed to those communities. Mm -hmm. We have identified since 2018, 534 of those communities. And so the workers are deployed right across the island in those 534 communities. Yes. In addition yes. to those communities, they are working in our urban centers, they're working in our markets mm -hmm. and some other critical areas that we're likely to see transmission mm -hmm. in. Um, tell us about some of the breeding sites. What are some, where are some of the places that you will find breeding sites mostly? Well, so you know that we have always said that the Aedes aegypti mosquito it's a domesticated mosquito. In fact, we do have another vector of the three viruses in Jamaica. It's called Aedes albopictus. So we have two vectors now in Jamaica that is able, that are able to transmit these three diseases. And they're domesticated mosquitoes, meaning that they're found breeding in and around where we live, play, and work in containers. And so the containers that we are, we are finding that are most prominent in our Jamaican setting is the 45 to 55 gallon drum. Every household seems to have a 45, 55 gallon drum, and those are our main breeding sites. Tires are our second, and you know, the small containers that lie around the home tend to lend themselves to breeding as well. Right. So, if people have to have um, these drums, mm -hmm. what should they do to prevent the, the mosquitoes from breeding? Right. So, we first, the first um, strategy that we ask persons to do is to cover those drums. Once the drums are covered, then the mosquito will not have access to breeding. We do understand that there are communities that they do not have piped water, and so they collect water from rainfall. So there is a resistance in covering. So we ask that you cover with a meshed material yes. that allows the water to go in, but will prevent the mosquito to go in. We, there's another strategy that they can use, just a little oil and pour a little oil on the surface yes, of the water. Yes. What this does, it suffocates the immature stage of the mosquito, and so you won't have adults coming through. Right. So how are the communities reacting to, to your work in, in the various areas? How are they reacting? It's a mixed reaction. We, we have seen not much behavior change as it relates to the management of our, our water container, which is very disappointing to us. Because as I said before, the Aedes aegypti and the Aedes albopictus mosquito, they only tend to breed in these containers that are found in and around where we are. And if persons begin to take action, to deal and manage properly um, with these containers, then we will see a reduction in the transmission of these diseases. So we're not seeing the levels of behavior change that we would like to see. In addition, there seems to be a little bit resistance of having our workers come into the homes. They have reported to us some violent activities against them. Some persons have been refusing to let them inside. And so this is also hampering our ability to be impactful as we would like to be. Right, so people are hostile, which means they don't understand the work that you're doing, or they don't value it. Yes. And, and so what are you going to do about that? So the Ministry of Health, having received this report, we're going to be doing an educa educational campaign to explain to persons why the workers are there, why the workers need to access the home, because they need to come inside yes. to search and to yes. be able to pa point out to the householder where the issues are. So it's very important. So we're going to be engaged in a media campaign explaining the importance of having the workers access yes, the home yes, environment. Yes. Let's take a break now and we'll continue with more information on the Ministry of Health and Wellness Vector Control Program. Please stay with us. The following is brought to you by MOCA, the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency with kind support of NIA and USAID. <laughs> Criminal minds think they are cunning The major organized crime and anti-corruption agency have them running Your friend a show comes here yeah. Take time running Are we ready for the ops? Drive up on your block Step out now me block Side but take about your laptop Pull up every lock No evidence to drop We put it in a cuffs and now we have the underground Sin you say slam you better look out for it When you move corrupt better look out for it They say you get wet look out for it Look out for it Look out for it the proceeding was brought to you by MOCA, the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency with the kind support of NIA and USAID. MOCA! MOCA!
Welcome back to Get the Facts with Sherine Huntley-Jones, Program Manager for the Vector Control Program in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Tell us, so the fogging has been going on. Yes. How often do you do it and um, how do you decide on the communities? Well, under our enhanced program, fogging activity takes place every night. So we're fogging seven days per week. We are focused based in areas depending on two things, the levels of the mosquito infestation and also from where we are getting reports of cases. Right. So the schedule is made up based on those two parameters and the activity is carried out every night. They're yeah. carried out every night. Every night where? How right many? across right where across the right across the country in all our thirteen parishes. There's fogging. Oh, all activity. right. Speak to us about how the fogging is done yeah. and what should we be doing while this activity is taking place. Right, so the fogging is done during the times of what we call dusk, just in that gray period. We tend to do it at that time because a lot of the species of mosquitoes that we want to target are very active at that, that time. However, the Aedes aegypti mosquito, which we know is a day-biting mosquito, by the time it gets dark, that mosquito tends to be sheltered. It's gone into rest. Yeah. And so it's inside under our cupboards, in our closets, it's hiding. And so when our fogging teams are coming through, you would hear the Ministry of Health say, open your windows and doors. There is a reason for that because the Aedes aegypti, it's on the inside. And so we ha you have to allow the fog to drift on the inside to be able to get to the Aedes aegypti mosquito. And so once our teams are coming through, in the evenings, we have mm -hmm. to open our windows and doors because the Aedes aegypti mosquito is not very active, flight, active in flight at that moment. It's not active, so it's, um, but it, um, if it's not active, then it's not biting. Oh, that's well, that's an interesting thing, yes. because what, what we tend to do when we get home, the first thing we do is we turn on the lights on the inside. Yes. So once we turn on the artificial light, she becomes active. But if the, if the environment is dark, Aedes aegypti tends to go mm -hmm. into rest. Okay. So um, um, you've spoken about the, how communities are hostile to you, but how engaged are the communities in, in these activities? Are you getting a, what kind of level of engagement? It really does vary from community to community and from parish to parish. I think what, we'd what we would like to say that we'd like to see the community more involved and engaged. I visited a country, uh, Brazil, on a workshop, and they had a system in place where the communities have actually formed a partnership with the Ministry of Health, and it's the community members that are monitoring their neighbors. So they do not have vector control workers from the Ministry of Health visiting the homes, okay. but their neighbors are visiting the homes and then making the reports to the Ministry of Health. And I found that it, it was quite successful. I think we'd like to see more of that here in Jamaica, yes. where the community <laughs> takes a responsibility, yes. where community members are actually doing, doing the inspection and the reporting. And so there's ownership. So I think we'd like to see more ownership of the program yes, at yes. the community right. level. So that means more interaction with the public then. Definitely, right. definitely. So, so we had a massive outbreak of, of chick V in yes. 2014. Yes. Tell us what are the lessons learned? What we found since the outbreak of chicken gunya in 2014 and with Zika in 2016, <coughs> that there are a lot, of, a lot of factors lending to the breeding of mosquitoes in and around our environment. We've also learned that behavior change is not a short-term um, mm -hmm. objective, but it is a long-term objective. And so in light of that, the Ministry of Health has been looking at its public awareness campaigns and its behavior change program with a view of implementing strategies that will help us to achieve our behavior change objectives, which is simply to get persons to properly manage their breeding um, the breeding containers in and around their environment. I think another lesson that we learned from chicken gunya and from Zika is that partnership with our stakeholders and our, our sister agencies, very critical. Yes, yes. A lot of the factors that lend themselves to the breeding of mosquitoes, it's outside of the mandate of the Ministry of Health to address. And so we have to have what we call a joint up approach with all government, all stakeholders yes. to be able to tackle successfully the factors that lend themselves to breeding. And so out of the, the both outbreaks we have, I think we have a stronger uh, collaborative approach in dealing with the disease in Jamaica. In fact, we have one of the, one of the greatest models in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. if I do. I can say that. And so we have been working closely with our sister agencies, such as the National Solid Waste Management Authority, 
We work closely with parish council and the National Works Agency in dealing with the issues that lend themselves to the breeding of the mosquitoes. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. We're approaching the dengue period, yes. and already we have some confirmed cases. Indeed. Tell us what can we do as a nation yes. to prevent um, having more, more dengue um, cases. Definitely. So we need to look, you tell us how yes. to treat or what, what we're to do. Before I get into the strategies, I want us to have an understanding, a greater understanding about dengue and the epidemiology of dengue. Over the years, we have treated dengue at the household level, like the common flu, you get dengue, you feel a little better, and then it's gone. But what we have seen in our last recent outbreaks is that we're having increased hospitalization and unfortunately increased death. And this is just not in Jamaica, this is across the Caribbean. And this is so because in our region, we have had all four serotypes of dengue circulating. And that means that most of us would have been exposed to having dengue more than once. And it is proven that once you've had dengue twice or more, you're predisposed to becoming severely ill each time you get so it, it right is. and so our population has been exposed to all four stereotypes so we're seeing increasing cases against that background we have to take action we cannot continue to treat dengue as the common cold that you just get over we're seeing that our children are, are being affected and we're seeing deaths and any death it's just on one death is unacceptable yes. to us at the Ministry of Health. And so there is a call to action from the ministry to the population that we have to begin to manage our environment in a way that it will not cause us to become ill. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And we know now that once you have dengue, it doesn't mean that's the only time you can have it again. So you need to take care of yourselves and your communities. This has been Get the Facts with our guest, Sherine Huntley-Jones, Program Manager for the Vector Control Program in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. To watch this program again, log on to our social media handle, YouTube forward slash Watch JIS, and stay connected via our website at jis.gov.jm. Until next time, I'm Anthros Campbell. Take care. <music>Jamaica is filled with lots of talented individuals, and this week, we're going behind the stove with one of them. He's a product of the Ebony Park Heart Academy, where commercial food preparation is a popular course. Take a look. Tourism and agriculture have been like Siamese twins from day one. 88% of the world travels for food experiences. And that 42% of the expenditure of all the visitors over the world is on food. It's for reasons such as this that the Ebony Park Heart Academy has been invested in producing top-class chefs and entrepreneurs to fill industry demands. What HEART is doing for students is that we are empowering our students. We want them to not just get a skill, but get the skill and make it useful. Uh, open up their own business, 
uh, have an entrepreneurship mind where you don't normally just have to work for people. We want to target everybody, those that are not doing anything, those that are at home not doing anything, those that feel like, boy, I'm too whole and I really can't go back to school. We are for everybody. I want to target everybody in Jamaica because we want to empower our nation. And this is where it starts. We offer a wide variety of hospitality courses such as um, commercial food preparation level 2, um, food and beverage service level 3. So, But for this one now that we are focusing on today is the commercial food preparation level 2 where um, they learn a variety of things. They learn from pastries and to savory cooking. We actually have our own farm where we produce most of the items that we use. Uh, the pepper, we have our agro-processing units that gather the food and they process it and bottle it and we use those products. So we don't normally uh, buy a lot of produce out there on the street because we have our own processing units, our own farm, our own crops, produce, everything. Meet Amaria Bryan, a commercial food preparation student at the Ebony Park Arts Academy. At the 67th staging of the Denby Agricultural Industrial Food Show, Amaria showed off what Hart is teaching him with a scrumptious meal of chicken pasta stir fry. I do on the job training. So basically, for a year, I work at the Ebony Park training restaurant, meanwhile, I am training. So there are days when I have to go in the kitchen to cook for people who are buying food at the restaurant. And we have to do this to get received, to attain our grade. And based off our performance, we are graded, and then based off that, we get our selfie ticket. What we did, we added a little twist to it and add an Alfredo sauce. So we basically just build, it, build a new recipe on spot, and we just call it Chicken Alfredo. And in this, we have sweet pepper of different colors. We have ginger, we have salt, we have a little pinch of salt. We have basically what we was aiming for, we wanted to go natural, so we had no powder seasons. And we had two different types of cheese. We have mozzarella, which give it the body, and we had pepper jack cheese, which give it the flavor and give it a little spiciness. And we had sweet corns, we had blanched carrots, yes, and we have a little clove to give it a little kick. And basically, that's, those are the main ingredients in the pasta. And we just add a little, a little bit of brandy to bring out the flavor in the chicken breast and to basically give it the flambe, the fire effect, that's what we did. And this dish can be prepared in about five to seven minutes. Basically, I have to give the chicken breast time to cook and the chicken breast cook very quickly. I just recently completed level two and I'm actually doing voluntary service here at Denby. And what I, what I plan to do, I plan to do level three. That's the supervisor level, chef the party, under the same commercial food preparation. And after I finish that, I plan to work in the hotel, get some experience, but my ultimate goal is to work on the cruise ship and then in the Burj Khalifa at Dubai. The heart has created a, basically what we call it, a work, a workforce database where they invest in, the, they invest in their trainees and then they, put, they produce them out into the workforce and they basically have, they have a lot of jobs waiting for us. So once a, once a lot of hotels here, Ebony Park, then they want to take us. Some of them don't even want to interview it. They just want to know you're coming from Ebony Park and then they just grab it to because they know Ebony Park produces the best trainees, the best chefs you can find in Jamaica and on the cruise ship. Students have worked in our major hotels in Jamaica. Even now I have students at the Rio Hotel, I have students at Sanders, I have students at Hilton. Uh, they are all over the place. I have students who are overseas now who are in the hospitality area and most of them are chefs that's what they do that's what they love so they just go there the sky's the limit for them and they just want to do more they want to learn more so even though we teach them here they always have a passion to know more about this in this food because it's so wide it's so fun i don't even know what to tell you but it's a whole lot in one little package that you can get so much from if you want to grab your piece of the pie, but you're scared because you have no certifications in the subject area, don't worry. A mathematics and English entry test are available to process your application. So ask yourself this, 
What exactly is stopping you from starting your journey? Dash no paper, no dash no plastic. Dispose your garbage responsibly. No know how to recycle. Learn it quick, and if you drop it, better pick up every piece of it. Plastics last forever. Don't forget the bits, 'cause when them touch the street, them end up in at the sea. Collect pan the reef where they fish them feed, and when you want seafood, I eat your eat. Keep the island clean, so clean. From the peaks to the beach, so clean. No dirty up Jamaica, please don't do it. No dirty up Jamaica, no dirty up Jamaica, no dirty up Jamaica, no dirty up Jamaica. Youth Month 2019 is now being observed under the theme Jamaican youth are lit. They lead, inspire, and transform our nation. The month of celebration is intended to advance youth participation in the socio-political, economic, cultural, and spiritual processes of society. One way this will be achieved is through the sitting of the National Youth Parliament of Jamaica. We need to celebrate and highlight the outstanding contributions and achievements of Jamaican young people. And this will be done at the Prime Minister's National Youth Awards for Excellence. We need to showcase and display the best of youth skills and talent in Jamaica while promoting national pride and goodwill. The activity Around the Table Dialogue for Youth Entrepreneurs will do just that. Support our youth, encourage them, and guide them as we work to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. If you know one pop down and thank it, thank it. You feel bon mosquito and run with dengue. So no make water sickle in open container. For them to read up and that a danger. Push them out, run them away. Stop them with the zapper and down them with spray. Use mosquito net and mosquito screen. Protect your household now make them come in. If you know one pop down and thank it, thank it. You feel bon mosquito and run with dengue. If and lick your head and your joints and your eye and your warm fever mitt and your temperature high it could be dengue don't hesitate see a doctor don't self-medicate for some pain killer can make you bleed and you will try if you recover and no success we know what pop down and thank you thank you with a bone mosquito and run with dengue a message from the ministry of health Thanks for watching another edition of Jamaica Magazine. Join us again tomorrow when we'll do this with new content all over again. Send your feedback on today's show to Jamaica Magazine at jis.gov.jm. Also, follow us on our social media pages. Download our app on your Apple and Android devices. And you can also visit our website at jis.gov.jm for more information. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.